evaluation and to think through what are the things we would not know. Um, so we think firstly at a, at a sort of system-wide level um, with evaluation, um, with, with household surveys we would start to know that there'd be massive strides across the world in getting children into school, but we wouldn't know what we will know is that children are in school and they're not learning. And indeed I think that's why everyone from every sector who's here today is here. Um, if we think of specific interventions, um, today's meeting is about this year's set of the National Address, but last year um, the President was wanting to give a tablet to every child in every school. And if we think it's only through various evaluations that we've come to fundamentally understand that improved resources um, do not necessarily need um, to improve outcomes. So the second question is how do I see um, quantitative and qualitative evaluations interacting. So the first point is context, 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 or um, sort of put um, in more detail, um, knowing what works in terms of treatment effects in a specific trial um, is, is not um, that useful unless we understand how the mechanisms of the program actually interact with the context to produce um, the outcomes. Um, Impact is also a conversation. I've got here um, the sort of archetypal uh, quant um, evaluator having a cadenza about anecdotal evidence. But let's be serious. Um, would you rather have the picture telling a thousand words or the graph? And the great thing of mixed methods is that we get to combine these two. So these kind of examples of quant qual interactions are very much focused on sort of explanatory sequential. We'd be using qualitative data to explain our concept. <laughs> But what about something um, a bit bigger than that, a bit grander than that? And so if we take an enlarged philosophical view of causality, then there's really scope for quant qual to move from interacting to actually integrating. Um, and so the unique strength of quantitative evaluations is by varying things um, in, in a, an experimental situation that we can really um, isolate causal effects and we can measure um, causal effects. But what we stuck with is um, the cartoon here, the black box between cause and effect. Um, and it's through um, the qualitative or contextual evaluations that we can actually identify causal processes or causal mechanisms and, and get towards moving from causal description to causal explanation. And really it's kind of theory that um, combines those two. So the question here um, was what is in terms of qualitative research kind of interesting me at the moment and it's a, it's a part of this comprehension piece. So if we look at the kind of EGRA style assessments that are done everywhere, a lot by RTI USAID, their reading with fluency and meaning is very much focused on literal questions. So what this thing here is showing is for a bunch of grade three learners in Eastern Cape and KZN, it's quite a step, this is listening comprehension, to be able to answer the literal question. But look how big the gulf is to get to the first inferential question. That was for grade three, this is for grade five. Lot lower step to get to that first literal question, but still a massive 20 percentage points to get to a listening comprehension, simple inferential question. And interestingly, very similar findings across oral reading comprehension, across written comprehension. So really kind of trying to focus um, on that. And then on my final thing, if there's one message I could send to the president, um, this quote from Deaton and Cartwright, technical knowledge, though always worth having, requires sustainable, suitable institutions if it is to do any good. So they would make the case for that we actually know a lot about works, but finding what works is not the magic bullet. Um, if we don't understand the context in, in which we're putting those. So in the short term, this means that all of us, including government, need to make an effort to learn to work with the institutions that are in place, to take all the suggestions coming from here, but to be cognizant of the necessary support factors and the potential derailers. But then there's a longer term part, and that's about strengthening our institutions, and I'd go even broader and to say the environment, so that we can take these pockets of what works, all of these uh, amazing things that NGOs are doing in this space, and that we're put them, putting them into long term and into an environment where they can take hold and flourish.